Hello everyone and welcome back to the second video in our login form series. If My name is Peter Collins and uh, we are glad to have you here. If you haven't watched my first video, um, we are talking about how to design and um, build a login form like this with form validation for the input fields and stuff like this. We all have seen forms like this or pages like this on the internet and we are going to do a deep dive on how to build this form so we have already started if you need the link to the first um to the first video just ask for it on the group and uh, we we'll provide it so we have started with our markup and this is how far we have gone we have added our background image we have done our HTML file containing all the markup for our page right here. It's not long, it's just uh, 56 lines of code in our HTML. And this is how far we have gone with our CSS. We have styled the container element and we have included the background image. We have our images over here and these are the images we are going to be using as our icons and our logo. So we proceed. Next up, we are going to style the header element. Remember that within our HTML, the first element in the, in the section where we called container is our, H, our header element. So in this section, right after this section the next element we have here is our header element and um, i want to quickly point out that there was a little slight minute error in um, our code before the header element is not supposed to wrap our form so we have taken out our form from the header element and we are doing it like this so the header element stays on its own in that section and our form is right here okay. thank you for understanding sorry for that slight error it was an oversight so right now yes it's correct we will style our header so copying the styles already from an existing CSS file for the one we created before. This the CSS is for this one. So I'm just taking styles from that document uh, because we don't have so much time to explain every single line. I'll just be explaining them in batches. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask on the group. So our header is going to contain the following styles. The header width is going to be 100% of the viewport. It's going to be 12% of the viewport height. And we are going to give it a padding at the top and the bottom and uh, all those and all those. So our, our header is going to be absolutely positioned at the top of our page like a normal header. And we are going to give it a Z index. So right now, let's look at our header so our header does not have any visible content i'll give the header a background element a background color so we can see what it looks like background red so now we are going to be able to see our header yes this is it and because of the styles we used, it has centered our logo right here. This is where we are going to put our logo. And um, right there, that's where our logo will sit. So we remove the background color and we proceed 
to import our logo so in the src right here we say image logo okay plug stock logo yes we are plug stock we are a tech company based in Port Nigeria and we run trainings for web and mobile app development, UI, UX, 3D design, and a lot more other courses. So we have our logo there. You know, this is not right. The logo is in the wrong place. Sorry. Where is that header? Do not hide from me. Oh. Yes. Okay. So that is where our logo is supposed to sit. When we refresh, we see that the logo has taken its rightful position. But there's a problem now. The logo is too big. It is just too big. And in order to fix that, we are going to go back into our HTML code. We do something. We are going to give it a style. Let's say we want our logo to be just ten percent of the screen height. So, what we are going to do is this style. I want to style it directly. This is called inline styling. See height. So VH stands for viewport height. So I put a semicolon like that and take a look at it. Again, reload right there. So our logo has taken the right style. It is now visible for all to see. Next, we are going to style something else. We are going to style our title this this is the next element we are going to style okay so come here and see title. inside this title we are going to list some styles We'll talk about the font size. We are going to adjust the font size, the font weight, the margin, the bottom margin, and the color. So, font size 60 pixels, font weight. We want it to be bold, margin, bottom. We want to give it some space at the bottom, and we want to give it this dark blue ish color. So, there. And next, we proceed to style our form element. So our form is not a class name, we are going to be styling it directly like this. And because it is a form, we are giving it 30% of the viewport width. We are also giving it a padding, a margin, and the background gradient so this is what it looks like in the styling and we refresh this is what our form now looks like so we proceed with speed what's the next thing we are styling we are styling the field set okay so for some reason uh, our field set has a border in Chrome. We observe this. This is default styling. Some browsers implement default styling, and we don't want these borders. We want to take them off. So, in our code, we are just going to say field set remove border. Yeah. 
content. So I don't want to use borders. Borders be gone. Just like magic. Then we are going to style some other elements, some other, other, other. I'm going to skip this part. I will just import all the styles. If you have questions concerning the styling, just let me know in the group. Now answer that, but because of time, we are not going to continue with this styling like this. I just copy the styles from the previous page, and voila, I'll dump them here. So, this is it. With all the styling, this is what our, our page now looks like. We need to import these icons. One, two, three, and four. How do we go about that? Back to our HTML in the image tags. This is the image tag for our email icon. So we import it from here. Say email png. We import our password icon here. Ng. Look for PNG. Next, we import the hide and review icons. So, mm -hmm. PNG. Hide icon. And this. And review icon. Okay. Visual Studio Code makes things easy for you by providing suggestions. So right now we have a page that looks like this. Let's refresh please. So if you would observe, there are differences between our final result and our current page. The icons are too big right here we have two icons instead of one and um, we do not have any text down here so what do we do about that we go back to our html and we are going to put some sizing on our images our icon images we put some sizing there we have this size it so we are giving it 20 pixels height and 20 pixels width and this is going to apply on all our icons so let's look at it one more time Okay, good. Icons are the correct size, they are the right size now. These two are here because, um, well, because they are there. We are going to hide one using our JavaScript, so let's not go into that now. There's something you'll notice our page still does not have an icon like this. So, for this, we are going to take our logo. When we take our logo, we take it to uh, a page, a website called Fava Icon Generator. We generate our Fava Icons here. Fava Icon .ic .io. So This is the tool that helps us create icons that we can use for web pages. It creates these icons for us. All we have to do is just drop an image there. It uses the image and converts it to an icon. So we are going to drop this image right there. Still building. 
let's be patient a bit okay so while we wait all right it's here and we just go to image have icon generator png to ic here we have to drag and drop our image so we drag it all the way across come on okay and when we download it generates icon files for us so we have our icons in this folder but more importantly are these these links it generates these links for us that we can use in our web page to link to the icons so let's open the icons and see what we have So here's what we have in our icons. We have the favicon.ico. We have different sizes of icons here. And these are what we are going to use on our page. But for now, we copy this and we paste in our page. Of course, we are going to paste in the head tag. That's where our icons belong in the head tag so we just do this this one there okay. we create a folder for our icons let's call it icons all of them okay. and we control V it here come on be a good boy now So we have our icons folder in here. We are going to paste all those icons. Yes, we have our icons all here. So we have pasted our icons and we have linked to them. The next thing to do is to refresh our page to see what it now looks like. It should have an icon up here similar to this. Good. So we have solved that puzzle. Next up, we are going to look straight into our JavaScript and see what it is that javascript does and how it helps us with our form validation and with hiding elements so let's take a deep dive for the javascript section we are going to create a new file and we call it we'll call it index.js so create a new file here now in the root folder of our project right here Create a new file in the root folder and let's call it index.js. Okay, 
okay good so in here we are going to have all our start all our javascript code for this tutorial javascript like um, i always like to say is a programming language for the web is the programming language of the browser and this script we are going to have all our functions let's just describe what we are going to put in here it's going to contain functions So we want to link our HTML to this JavaScript file so that whatever we put here is accessible from HTML. How do we do that? We use a script tag for that. It's best practice to put our script tag just above the closing tag of our body element. Why is it best practice? Because the whole page loads before our JavaScript loads. So our JavaScript does not, we do not want our JavaScript to, um, to, to block the loading of our page. So our page should load before the JavaScript loads. So we'll have something like this script tag. Then we have our source. script is this this is text this is important when you're linking it to your html page so now we have done the linking let's perform the acrobatics so we are going to start with the email input Let's say we want to get our email input element from the HTML. So we do this on email. Okay. Remember, we created unique IDs for our email input for our password input and for each of these um, uh, form validation elements so we are just going to extract them from the html using our ids so what's the id we gave the email input element let's go back and find out here this is our email input and as you can see it an ID email input. So we just want this from here and paste it. In our next video, I'm going to focus on the JavaScript aspect of this uh, tutorial creating a login page that looks like this. So far, so good. I believe we are following and we are catching up. We are also discovering how much programming goes into the simplest of web pages that we use every day. These are things that we do not appreciate unless we know what happens behind the scenes. Developers are doing a lot of work and this is the reason why many companies, so many new startups and existing companies are hiring more developers because more and more ideas are being born and more and more digital products are being released 
all right companies need to build and ship faster this is the need for developers so the essence of these tutorials is to give us insights let us understand what the work of a developer is and what you'll be doing if you have an it job remote job anywhere in the world and um, this is a highly paid job by the way i i did this uh, login page in a few hours i was done uh, and my work is basically stuff like this and i enjoy it and i guess i hope you are enjoying it too so i'll see you in the next video take care